What up all my woke folk, it's Sky in the flesh, but not of the flesh. Uh, I just wanted to make this video today to talk to y'all about God's timing, okay? Now, I had got exposed to the truth about hip-hop and the music industry and all that mad early when I was like at least eight, I think. I recall uh, the church that I was going to at the time, um... I, I it was so long ago that I can't remember if it was actually at the church I was going to or if we had went like our congregation had went to another church and they were playing G Craig's Truth Behind Hip Hop series in there and I was so young I know that there's no way I comprehended it to the fullest to to the to the amount that I could have had I been older but I do remember feeling differently and just seeing things differently but I don't it's not like it played out in my life afterwards because I was I remember buying the B-Day Beyonce B-Day album and you know watching music choice on demand and stuff like that so it didn't really have that much of an effect on me then I don't think or at least not after because that was more so my middle school years but anyways that's besides the point I just said that because it's all about God's timing so I got exposed to it he allowed me he knew that I was going to get exposed to that truth back then but he also knew that it wasn't gonna do nothing for me because he knows my whole life he knows that everything that's gonna happen before it happens and um it didn't happen then so it's all about his timing so but if we fast forward to sometime in 2017 when I was just obsessed with the Kardashians like I was like can I please look like you can I please be flawless and perfect and curvy and clear skin and glamorous and just be cute and rich and girl boss and all these things can I be that no you can't because it's all fake anyway um but that was all I cared about and then I had this weird dream that I feel like I've talked about on this channel before uh I can't remember if I did I'm pretty sure I did I'm pretty sure I made a video about it um but after I after I had that dream I feel like it was that same day like I, you have a dream in the middle of the night and then you wake up and then I woke up and then I seen this video this Mr. E video talking about Jennifer Aniston and that giant creeped me out I had always thought she looked she was such an annoying looking person because she always looked the exact same maybe she she dyed her hair a little bit darker or a little bit lighter but she always had that part in the middle even when she had her hair in a ponytail, it just was still a part in the middle. It was so annoying, and I was just like, I don't get it. Same thing with Angelina. Not the same thing with Angelina Jolie, but I always thought to myself, like, she has a really huge bust. Her chest is big, and she's got a tiny waist. And so I'm in my head, I'm like, oh, that's just, you know, white people. White people ain't really got no shape. But that's a lie, because I married a white man. And I lived with his family, and I mean, they have hips. They didn't look tiny like Angelina Jolie did. So it's not like, it, oh, it's a white thing. You know, white people don't really have shapes. That's not a thing. Some white people may not have shapes, but, it, you know, like, no. Okay? No. It's a celebrity thing. Celebrity women, for some odd reason that nobody knows the answer to, don't have shapes. But... I felt like after seeing these videos, I just couldn't unsee it, okay? There's no way this isn't true. If you think about it, these celebrities do the same hand symbols as the Baphomet. And they're all pro the alphabet, if you catch my drift. Do I really have to go there? They're all pro the alphabet. If you understand what I'm saying, please explain in the comments because I really don't feel like saying that, you know. So they're pro that. So why wouldn't they, some of them, be secret, uh, not who they say they are, cross-dressers, whatever. These people, not only the celebrities, but the people in the news, and they all lie. You know what, let me not say that either okay wow this is hard i have not been on here in a long time i don't know what i can say but we know that there's things that just haven't been right in a while so why would we think that when we look at a person on tv that they are who they say they are why would we think that they are actually what they look like they are 
if everyone has been lying about everything, why wouldn't this be a lie, right? The devil doesn't have anyone in his image or he hadn't, he wasn't able to make man in his image. So he's trying to change the image into what he wants it to be, which is perversion. That's exactly why this will be perfect. This is, people think this is so far fetched. Oh, there's no way that Serena Williams is, you know, there's no way she, he, she, he, gosh, I'm having such a, I cannot talk today. He, she, there's no way that she can, yeah, what? No, that's so impossible. That's absurd, Sky. What are you talking about? But at the same time, Sky, you know, uh, there's fluoride in the water and there shouldn't be. Uh, you don't really need to give your kids these shots when they come out. This, But this stuff is true, so it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. But I just uh, said all that to say that since I was obsessed with the Kardashians, you know, they, maybe they were my God, you know, maybe I did idolize them in a way that I wanted to be them. I wanted to be like them. I wanted to be, you know, and that's all I would focus on. That's all I spent my time doing was watching Kardashians. They have, they have marathons on, on E of their show. And I wasn't even trying to work hard. I wasn't like, trying to get a nice job to where I can buy expensive things and even try to look expensive or glamorous like they did. I didn't, it was just them. I just felt like watching them would make me somehow just appear to be cute or whatever. It was stupid. All right. And I was just being a bum and it was just wow. So, you know, I had this dream that Kim was my girl. She was like, yo, let's go see my new house. Okay. I'm excited. Let's go see. As soon as she opens the door, weird, eerie smoke comes out of the door. It's just gray walls. It's cold. And it's not like a freezing cold. It's just this still, like, chill. You know what I mean? It's just still and chilly. I don't don't know how else to describe it. She's holding me up in every room for hours, talking about where she got this stuff, how they made it, how they did it, how long it took, whatever you can, every little detail, anything you can describe, explain, brag, whatever, she did it. We were in the room for hours and hours. We were in each room for hours. And I knew that she knew that she was holding me up on purpose. Just like if you think about outside of the dream, when I'm watching the show endlessly and it's just really stupid stuff that doesn't matter, you're holding me up as I'm watching your show and you're not doing anything productive. You're not saying anything productive that will help me or anything. I'm just watching it in oblivion. How dumb, how stupid is that, right? So that's what I got from the dream, right? And so as we're dwindling down on the day, because it's getting dark out and also um, there's almost no more rooms to show, Rihanna shows up and she has her entourage and Kim disappears out the joint and she's leading me her and her aunt she's not talking to me Rihanna it's just her her crew and I'm walking with her for, for some reason and they're all leading me to this like outdoor type place but it's still indoors remember on Bird Box when they were indoors it was like a high ceiling and they had trees and all it was kind of like that and uh let me just say that this was like around 2017 when I had the dream um Kim is lost. She's nowhere to be found. All these people start entering. It's almost, and like slowly the music starts to play. People, it's almost like becoming a party. Do y'all remember Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief? <laughs> I know this is like really childish, but I mean, it's kind of a good movie if you think about it, what they were talking about in that movie. There was a scene where the the main characters stayed in a casino for like five days or something like that or was it weeks or years I forget but they stayed in there and they got captive they had got held captive in there just because they were taking a lotus um they were eating some lotus flowers or something like that and that just reminded me of that I got stuck in there I got stuck in Kim's house and the party was going on and each time I looked for her each time I looked up I seen Kim with these men these fat white men in suits they're just staring at me and I see them by the DJ booth. I would try to go run up there. 
when I made it up there, uh, they weren't anywhere to be found. I kept trying to find them. Every time I was real close to them, um, they just ended up disappearing. So I don't, I didn't remember too much afterward because I, I took way too long to actually write it. I should have wrote the dream and I should have written my short story after it. But this was the, that, that dream was the inspiration for my short story. And, um, the reason it, it weighed heavy on me is because afterwards I had seen that Mr. E video and I'm like, well, if that's true about Jennifer Aniston and all these other people, it's got to be true about Khloe Kardashian. Have y'all seen that? Thing? Have y'all seen her? So that's what really freaked me out. And it put all this, I was like, I have to get this out there somehow. And that's when I started this channel. And that's when I started writing the short story. And, um, I fictionalized, well, it's all fiction anyway. It was just a dream. None of this actually happened, duh. But I fictionalized it and put it into a short story. And I'm thinking that since I woke up, since, okay, me having the dream and then seeing the video, Mr. E's video after, woke me up, like, to the core. Like, it, it did something different. Like, I can't unsee stuff now. Like, I can't go back to how I was. I can't go back and listen to music without thinking things, without feeling things and having to like do this whole, I can't do this anymore type thing. So if I put all of this into something, into a book, into a short story that other people can possibly wake up from, then that's beautiful. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what I'm hoping this does. Um, like seriously, like really guys, come on. I had a dream and then that happens. And then I get this urge to write a book. Are you serious? Okay, great. <laughs> anyways um I really like this short story that I made because I even if you don't believe in this stuff or have any idea like if, if I get a random person on Amazon to just come across it and read it it'll make them question things that they've they've had to hear about you know they've had to have heard about this stuff at least now in 2021 especially when that astral world stuff happened so if you pick this up, I would really appreciate it if you told your family members who maybe like to read, but they don't know about what's going on. It's real subtle stuff in there. Um, and then towards the, ah, uh, I'm not going to ruin it, but you know, there's just little symbolism, like stuff that they wear, necklaces that they have, how people in the house control people with certain things and, um, you know, MK Ultra stuff. You know, I'm trying to say stuff without saying it, but I want you guys to be intrigued and interested in it. Um, you'll see um, stuff with with teenage girls that probably shouldn't take place and words that are used and just little things. So I'm going to go ahead and read the description to you all so you can just get an idea um, of what it's actually about. And if you could be and if maybe you're interested in it. OK. Daniela and her best friend Mia's lives get turned upside down when they get lost in the Alaska mountains. It all starts when they knock on the door of a huge mansion they spotted in the middle of nowhere. The family that lurks inside is anything but normal. All the girls want to do is get in contact with their parents, but that one request gets pushed to the back burner, and the girls slowly begin to believe that they're never going to go home. What's supposed to be Daniela's sweet 16 quickly turns into a dark birthday weekend. Will they ever go back to their normal teenage lives or will this family hold them hostage? And that's it. It's called The Deal. It's a short story. So y'all can think about what it could be about, what may or may not happen, what, you know, what. It's just, I really love it. I really want you guys to read this and get it. Uh, I'll have a description. I mean, I have a link in the description. Go check it out. Please leave a comment. Um letting me know what y'all want me to cover next or what I should research, what's been going on. Maybe I don't know. But also, if you do get the book, please leave a review on Amazon. It'll just help me out a lot. And let me know in the comments here um, if you guys are interested in it. And um, yeah, I'll talk to y'all next week. And I hope everybody stays safe. And not in the way that everyone thinks. Not in the way that everyone's been saying to stay safe. Keep your eyes open. Be wise, but not in your own eyes.